Hello, Lois. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry. Ah, now people are showing up. And so Harry, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear and see, or see anybody right before that one. So uh, everybody, please add yourself again to the meeting notes. Let me just post them here. So I have to minute chat momentarily. So let's uh, maybe wait a couple more minutes and see whether more people are joining for the meeting today. Okay, since we have not a lot of people joining today, uh, Harry, I saw that you typed uh, some updates in there. So let's just briefly go over the updates here. And this is then most likely going to be a quick meeting and I'll try to have a more complete attendance uh, the next time, especially from the working group chairs to have more updates there. Okay, so on the landscape, oh, just as we say, hey, we have Diane here with Chris here. I always appreciate your background, Alois. Thank you. <laughs> I try my best. You get, you get me every time. I'm like, really? No. Okay, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we don't have a lot of people joining today. I still would go over the meeting and I take it as an action item for me to ensure that the working group leaders are showing up and presenting back. Um, but I'll take this one offline, obviously. Um, I'll just start with some quick ones. Uh, last meeting, we discussed about questions on the landscape. So the outcome was that people had said, okay, before like the talking about the landscape and landscape definitions. Let's define end user answers. And there was a lot of enthusiasm uh, to say, yes, I know exactly which questions we are dealing with when we're deploying 
applications with Cornelius or delivering them. So far, I have not really gotten any input on that one. Uh, I also posted it again, posted on the mailing list. Uh, I'm happy to push it forward just for the people over here, please provide your input in there, uh, moving this forward. Last time it was a lot of people who brought this up um, and wanted to share their input, but so far we haven't received anything. The question was how is it structured the landscape should be structured with your own project and scopes of the project or a specific questions that the end users approaching us. And the idea was here around the end users. Uh, we don't have anybody for air gap and operator joining us today. Let me just share my screen. Just realized that I'm not sharing. Just a second. Um, I think that the biggest push here is for this operator, the, uh, the, for the operator working group was the operator definition document. Um, and I'll work on this with the team. It seems like there's like ma a massive number of comments on the doc. Uh, that need to be worked into this and get into a stable form. It should be in a stable form already. Um, I'll push back to the team, but we really have something within the next two weeks uh, that we can review and send off to a uh, broader audience here. But it doesn't seem to be a lot of input here. I'll talk to the working group here to clean up the document here and uh, moving it forward. Hey, this is for that one. Aircap, nobody's here. They had a presentation from CNAP. Again, for Aircap, um, I can repeat what we discussed the last time. If you have best practices for Aircap delivery, please share them with the Aircap working group. Um, they're looking for examples. We have currently one from Cray, uh, which is currently the only one. And if you have best practices, maybe Diane, this would also be something for Reddit as Human Reddit has a best practice for Aircap installation of uh, of Kubernetes. So if there's somebody within Red Hat who wanted to share the best practices, that would be awesome. Okay. When does the AirGap working group meet? Uh, it's meeting every other Friday at a time that's brutal for me, but should be fine for you. It's on the official CNCF calendar. It is Friday. For me, it's 7 p.m., which makes it awful. 11, yeah, Friday, 7 p.m. is really awful for me. But the good thing is, I think it makes it on the East Coast. I think it's 11. Yeah, I'm on West Coast time. Um, I will oh. look, look and see who is the chair for the air gap one. It's uh, Jeremy Rickard. Uh, I was linked in the, the chart here. So um, it's Jeremy and. You just throw the link to that into into my into the chat, and that would be great. Yeah, sure. See if I can. Sean Hurley will always talk about that. So. So the I'll also throw it here in the chat. Just give me a second. Uh, I'm just Zoom confused right now. One should assume that now that we're spending so much time on Zoom, we know our way around this. Bit better. So you have the link. That's the that's the charter. Um, they also have obviously some. So what you're looking for is someone to talk about best practices for AirGap. Yes, uh, they they, got, they are they have a, a best practice document from Cray on how to deploy it. Right now we focus. They are focusing on Kubernetes, and the next step will be applications running on Kubernetes. Okay. But how like do I install Kubernetes in AirGap environment? Like with all the problems that come from it, I can't add. Uh, access a public container registry and all uh, the things that come with it. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, so I think reaching out to Jeremy would be a good starting point here. Uh, and the next so, step would so be look. You're looking for information on installing Kubernetes itself in an air gapped environment, not just applications? Yes. That's what they decided to do. They wanted to go for Kubernetes first and then for applications simply if, as it's the bootstrapping issue. If you can't get Kubernetes there, how do you get the applications on Kubernetes there? That's uh, what the working group decided, but eventually the goal is obviously to look into both. Mm 
Matt's profile picture on Zoom is confusing, but it looks like you actually have your camera turned off, but you don't have your camera turned on. Uh, camera turned on. And that's deliberate. See more people doing this right now. Okay, so yeah, there's not a lot of updates. Uh, so Harry, you were typing a cloud native belt packs. Do you want to talk about where we are on this one? Yeah, so I think the issue is quite tricky because uh, we we actually got a feedback from uh, TOC and uh, the, the community that we do have a definition of end user for the adopters. Those definitions are very simple, just saying that the end user should not sell clone native technology. Well, in this case, this actually means our criteria for incubation project need, need really need some revisit because it says it must have three at least uh, adopters. They are they have to be end users, but actually there are projects, for example, clone native build pack. The adopters are mostly vendors according to this definition. So they basically have no end users, either adopters. Most of them are Google Cloud or Vimeo or uh, Microsoft Cloud. So that is a issue and we may want to discuss or, or we can just raise the, we can just pass the, 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 the connected build pack due diligence duck to TOC because the rest of the duck is just, um, I think it's already good. The only issue is that the criteria section is not, but now it's not fitting to the incubation level, honestly speaking. But I think the issue is, I think we also have internal speaking with TOC that Maybe we want to change the criteria, but this is again not a, in the scope of C gap delivery, I think. Right, that is yeah. issue. Yes, I agree. I think this is definitely with the TUC to define how, how they see end users. And there are obviously projects where, obviously, um, let's put it that way an end user should be somebody who is actually like in not selling cloud native technologies and using the product and using uh the open source project in this case it is mostly obviously cloud providers because that's what build packs are massively used for i think it's, the, it's for the tuc to eventually decide but um they shouldn't usually have problems coming up with somebody who uses build pack as the primary way to build their containers yeah that's true so so i think uh, we will add these this, this recommendation or comments in the due uh, diligence doc and then we can pass clonative bill pack to TOC to do the final reevaluation. So we cannot do further recommendation at the stage of the stake. Yeah, and also the, the cloud vendors in this case are also the ones which are the main contributors. So it seems it looks right now like a very closed ecosystem, but eventually it's up to the TOC to decide on, on how to handle this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and the second question is about sandbox projects and yeah. I think that's yeah. simply the situation we have to wait out right now. So maybe we can give the the, the SIG here an update because not everybody might have joined the TOC calls. Sure. Do we have timeline for the new sandbox process? May I ask? I, I'm not really sure about that. Not yet. We are currently in discussions. So. Okay. So, so I think the suggestion is we temporarily hold the upcoming uh, project donation, right? No, it's actually not true. Um, things are still rolling as they are uh, going. This was presented two weeks ago at the um, uh, TOC meeting. We talked again about it yesterday and we're still kind of working through some of the details. But at the moment, no one is on hold as far as being able to take projects in. I mean, for the upcoming new project. So there are still other projects that, are, that, are, that they are pushing the, the seek. So should we just let them present, uh, pre present and then go with the normal process? Yes. Okay, I got it. And is there a plan from the TOC to update the projects on there what they is, should but expect? They're still working about what what they're going to do around like the existing sandbox proposals and the existing sandbox projects. So um, I anticipate this is going to be uh, at least another month or so. Do you think it'll be ready by June? Uh, well, given as June is in like two weeks, probably not. Mm. Uh, our next TOC meeting is going to be uh, June 2nd. Um, so this is actually a great opportunity to be able to say, hey, so get delivery. Um, you'll be presenting there. We'd love to be able to hear yeah. from you. 
I'll, I'll bring it up again because um, in this case on both sides here, but uh, like for some projects, it has been going on for a while and uh, it was like a little most people here who are obviously also part of this process. And Pima. Yeah. So this, this is the item I added. So I'm actually uh, trying to uh, approach in several other projects in, the, in, in this era and uh, I noticed the Kima. The Kima is actually, uh, I think it's phase two stick at the app delivery very well, but it actually got rejected in the proposal stage. But at, at that time, we, we do not have a uh, stick mechanism actually. So I'm, I'm not sure if there's any evaluation we can invite them to do a presentation or it's done. So yeah, there is a proposal, third one. I think I looked at it before. I think it's done mostly by SAP, right? Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. project from SAP. I would, I think irrespective of whether we take them in as a project, uh, into seek app delivery, I think it would be good for them to present, like on some of their the core concept of how they do things. Uh, seek runtime yeah. is doing the same when they presented the last time. Uh, it would be, I think, definitely good to have a presentation because this is, I think, the audience that is interested in what they're doing. So I'm open to even have the presentation, even if you think, well, we're not sure whether we want to be part of CNCF or not. But having app delivery related projects. Uh, Makes sense and technically they're obviously part of the CN they're not just technical they're part of the cncf landscape because they're an open source uh, project by one of the cncf members so i think even for this the sake of discussion i think it makes sense to present there do you know somebody as if uh, from from kima uh not yet but i'm trying to talk with them i i, I hope they can do some presentation in the seek uh, because I, I personally think they are actually in the scope of this thing very well. Mm. So let's see. In case you need some pointers to SAP, if they don't uh, reply by the meeting, just let me know. Uh, okay. Know some of the cloud people at SAP and can help there. Okay, sure, sure. I don't have contact, pe contact people for now. I, I will try to uh, approach someone. So if I, I fail, I, I will talk with you. Yeah, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, and Amy, we have the logo, but we don't have a lot of people here. That's okay. Um, uh, I can basically get people to vote on the issue from here, and then I can take a vote. Yeah, I have it open. So yeah, we have, uh, this was the latest proposal doc. Yeah, I just wrote on the issue. This is the latest one, right? Yes, that is the latest one. So yeah, yeah, I can hope and like directions in here um, because I don't really want to do a vote with like all million of these, but I will, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so let, let's give people some time to post on. I think we had uh, some people weighing in. Uh, we know that Diane obviously likes bees or was it ants? One of the two. I like bugs. Bugs, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, let's give people uh, a try. We have some people weighing in and then restrict it to those, like the top three and then take the work from those. I will also pass mine soon, okay. I think that's pretty much everything we had on the agenda for today. Oh, I, I have you... another. Uh, yeah, sure. Another topic. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you already think about uh, maybe we can change the uh, the CGAP delivery questionnaire for landscape to a Google form so we can send out it to people to fill in instead of uh, working on this documentation? Do you think that yeah. will help? Right. That that would be easy. I can do that. Okay. Yeah, I think the form will be either for people to fill it in. They just send it to everyone. They send me got feedback. Yeah, I can easily do that. Okay. I can be sending it around. Yeah. But hopefully we get a bit more and also still share it with people. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. 
All right, then we don't have anything else on the agenda for today. Okay, I'll keep, uh, I'll make the, the work group just to have a bit more to present for the next two weeks, the winter weeks from now. Okay, then let's call it. I, I can, let's call it. Sorry, I just jumped in at the end. Um, so um, my name is Vukash, I'm just here, actually not for reason of Kima, uh, for totally different reason, just wanted to show, uh, to see how you work. But um, and I heard Harry mentioned Kima, so I was actually working in Kima a few months back. So I know oh. uh, good contact points from Kima that I can uh, give you. So we should probably sync somehow offline. Okay. Uh, so I think I can approach you uh, through the Slack, right? Yeah, I'm I'm still on on Kima Slack available. So okay. Okay. Well. Yeah, I, I will try to um, ping you uh, today. So I'd like okay. to get some detail about this project. Maybe you guys can do a presentation in the future. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, then that's it for today, I assume. Thanks everyone, see you in two weeks. All right, thanks always. Bye-bye.